right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to week three of the podcast from season zero. Uh, we have just got round six behind us and we've only got one round left in the league, uh, after which we will play the finals uh, in the upcoming week as well. Uh, the finals will be about the first place with the first place team from each pool and the Oh, there will also be a third place final with the second place team. But we'll talk about that later uh, in the podcast next week. Uh, for today, we'll talk about the standings and the schedule for the past week and also what's coming up next week. And we've got a special guest, Vasectomy, from Eden. He's French as well as Corto. So let's see if we can speak some French today. Um, but I hope to have a very interesting conversation about you guys with the French, about the French community, but also the games and the, scr the scrimming, maybe. And we'll see what else comes up as well. So, um, bonsoir, Vasectomy. Uh, merci pour uh, uh, venir à votre podcast et uh, j'espère que vous avez quelque chose d'intéressant que vous, vous uh, pouvez parler, parler uh, avec, avec nous. Uh, so, that was my best French. Uh, I'm sorry if it was really, really bad, but I tried. <laughs> um, but let's start off with in your introduction. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so basically I'm Vasic Vasectomy, uh, team captain of the Team Eden with uh, Ghost Takes and uh, Nameo. We are basically a fresh team. Uh, we just created the team before the CB rival at the, the, the first announcement, um, right after the end of the uh, Keyboard Warrior team. And yeah, we want to commit a lot in uh, CB rival and uh, CBL, so, so you will uh, hear about us uh, in the in the couple of weeks. Nice, excellent. Um, and then uh, you just talked to me about it as well. Uh, how did you like the first six weeks with Eden? Uh, the first six weeks uh, in Eden, uh, with Eden in CB Rival was, um, I don't know how to say that, like uh, quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Like always, we always start the tournament by facing We Are Clowns. So now, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> it starts to be a malediction, a curse, but, uh, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine, it's fine. No, actually it was uh, really good. We face uh, some good team, even like the team that you are not expect uh, to be really good. At the end of the day, with the scream, with the um, custom lobby, mm -hmm. they practice a lot, they strat a lot. And depends on the map and, uh, and the ban, of course, but like the dynamics that brings the, the, the CB rival tournament. Mm -hmm. Create lots of surprise, actually, with the yeah, teams nice. and... Uh, and um, and all the stuff so yeah. really good for now really all good. right cool cool let's talk about the, the scrims and the maps later um, i'm really interested what you have mm -hmm. to say about those um corto let's hear about yeah. from you uh, as well yeah it's um you talk about scream uh i should say in french if you want yeah sure, <laughs> no but just a little bit yeah <laughs> tu parles, donc, si je me trompe pas tu parles d'entraînement uh, entre les équipes oh, yeah, tout à fait. Uh, um, pour intéresser un peu des nouveaux joueurs quoi que ce soit, est-ce que tu peux expliquer en anglais tant qu'à faire euh, euh, combien de fois un peu vous entraînez, euh, co comment ça se passe quoi, en fait tu vois l'entraînement entre chaque équipe et pour montrer qu'il y a une, une émulsion, une activité à ce niveau-là mm -hmm. entre les équipes. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I, I, I think I understood some of it, so let me try to translate it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, no so according, if I'm correct, you are asking Fazectomy uh, about the scrims, like what teams he played, how often he plays them, um, how the trading is going. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. yes kind of. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so basically, I would talk only for the Eden team, but mm -hmm. like most of the time, we scream one or two times per week. Uh, so one attack, one defense, uh, two times, and it will depends, of course, um, about you know the need of the team. Like uh, if I feel confident on the map, I will only scream like one, one time, I think, to don't mm -hmm. show too much, to don't uh, give too much information. Yeah. And like, like if I don't feel confident, of course, we will try to play this map as much as we can to to try to find some um, strat possibility or adaptation that we can do. Uh, Mm -hmm. during the match i think i think the most that we did was like three scream a wink something like this so yeah it's kind of a lot but actually it gives some like it's the only end game content that we have right now <laughs> so everyone is um put a lot of effort in uh, in that type of event yeah nice that's pretty good i like it <clears throat> and um what teams do you play often in the scrim then because that that's pretty important as well Okay, I'm not going to lie, there is a lot of rat mm. in every team. Yes, of course. So we try as much as we can to play against friends. Mm. Uh, so basically, us, we have the chance to have another uh, tournament team uh, inside Eden. Nice. Which, which is Odin's Legion. So most of the time we practice with each other and, uh, 
and, and we try to keep the scrim between each other. If we don't have like uh, the time to play, of course, we look for uh, other team, mm. but we play against them in priority to try to keep like uh, or information basically. And I know like we are not the only one in this case. Like for example, we are clown. They play a lot against uh, Jekt. <laughs> and say for sometimes, so so yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's true for most teams. I know Triarchy, for example, uh, the bottom team in, in Pool A, let's face it, mm -hmm. um, they play a lot against Banish, which is, which is also their alliance partner in, uh, in on EU2, right? So I think most teams have a like a friendly mm -hmm. house that they play a lot with or a friendly team that they play a lot with. Uh, Pond Guard has Chocolate Paladins, for example. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but that's what but this is was. really good. Mm -hmm to create a link between each other and uh, and to practice it's really really good yeah i think so as well um can you talk about the maps like you said like some maps you feel that you can you only need to practice it once other maps you try to practice more what what maps have you practiced more for and what maps do you think is are really easy to prep for for me there is some map like um, really one-sided mm -hmm. but like, actually like with the week? No, Kurak is okay. Yeah, okay. Kurak is okay. But it's more a map like... Uh, we, we didn't play them, but like uh, Valley Fortress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really one-sided. Nice. Um, but uh, what I like actually, it's like with the CB rival rules now, uh, the map are more open. I don't know if you see, but like there is a lot of more equip to win in attack mm -hmm. uh, compared to CBL. Uh, and this is just like because of the um, artillery rules. Yes. Because like if you look at CBL, most of the map, it's it's the same game plan. Like you try to win as much time as you can with the tower, mm -hmm. and uh, and after you play one push and the game is over. Like yeah. so, so that, that that's why the defense uh, win a lot actually in CBL, especially in the in the tower when you can play map. Mm -hmm. But with the CB rival, with the CB rival rule, sorry, with the ban, with the we we with all of this that. More possibility actually for the for the attack. For example, uh, Kura Castle, I will play totally differently if I ban Falco or if I ban Shenji. Mm -hmm. And so for the defense, it's more harder because they need they they, they need to prepare a strat uh, with uh, ban consequences, mm -hmm. but uh, they don't have it. So they need to be prepared to many many things where the attack choose uh, where they would go. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 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 it's really good. Yeah, I think so as well. That's, uh, yeah, I personally really like the no artillery rule. Like you said, it it, does, it creates yeah. a quicker gameplay as well. It's more fun to watch, I think, but also more fun to play because you just mm -hmm. are looking for like, how can you fight the best and not how can you shoot or the most artillery at once or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, Corto, you wanted to jump in as well, I think. Yeah, um, bah ça tombe bien en fait parce que c'est un peu la, la question que j'avais et ça enchaîne très bien ce que vous venez de dire, c'était savoir si avec le temps, est-ce que tu as un peu toujours les mêmes tactiques qui se développent euh, toujours sur certaines maps ou vraiment à chaque fois vous, avez, vous essayez de mettre en place des tactiques complètement différentes euh, même quand c'est les mêmes maps qui reviennent All right, so uh, um, I can't translate this, but can you translate good. the question is something about the same map and the same strategy or a different map and a different Yeah, exactly, strategy. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, no, basically it's uh, kind of different all the time we adapt. For mm -hmm. example, you know which team play what, actually, like you have a lot of data right now on YouTube. So you just have to spot a little bit to see like the playstyle. For example, Rose in the past, it, it was kind of weird because Rose in the past was used to play a lot of Cav mm -hmm. in every map. And right now it's like almost full infantry. Mm -hmm. So you just like spot and try to adapt the strat compare about uh, the playstyle of the team you have uh, against you. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course your play style. So if you look, sometimes like lot. I mean, often you will have some similar tactics. Like at least when you see the rotation and stuff like this. But yes. the way to play it, it's totally different. Yeah. Like I don't know if you see our uh, Allenberg match, for example. Mm -hmm. Like we were the only one to play a lot around the uh, Shenji. Mm -hmm. And even at one point, I don't know who was casting us, he thought like we were AFK. <laughs> but, we, we, but we legit create a lead of uh, 400, uh, 400 troops yeah, yeah, just yeah. by using Shenji on top of the wall. And like you have other team who will play like the same rotation that we did on top, for example, Jekt. Mm -hmm. But then they play around Falco, so the strat is totally different. The map is open like at different spots that we don't have because us, we, don't, uh, we didn't use Falco on this map. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the fact 
like to to be able to ban one unit each and you don't know which unit like it's really good to 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 create some adaptation you know like if you look cbl match all the time it's almost the same rotation the it's it's always the same if you look the match mm -hmm. it's just uh, um who 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 do um how do you say this sorry uh, who do the best strat or who, who win in um, in field battle yeah, so... yeah exactly and in cbl you could say that like um the meta is pretty still it's always the same units so yeah. so there's always one strategy in the end that is the best strategy yes but with <clears throat> the cb rifles because of the bands that can be different like you said it means mm -hmm. that there is a different meta in each game almost and that means that different places on the map can be defended or maybe yeah, exactly yeah. yeah it's it's definitely more interesting and um you mentioned your game against uh, uh, Rose, uh, which was two weeks ago in round five on mm -hmm. Sun City. I really like that map, actually. Um, I know some teams don't, but I really like it, especially watching all the games. And I think your game was really good um, uh, against Rose. It was also a really important game because that was about uh, if Rose won, they could still beat We Are Clowns. They go for the first place, but you beat them. And now you seem to be going for second place. We'll get mm -hmm. to the pool B later. but. Um, how did you specifically prep for Rose, uh, like you said, on the Sun City and the strategy in, for that? Uh, we did a lot of spot, mm -hmm. like uh, we look a lot of match, even if it was different, but uh, we legit look like all the match of Rose uh, since the start. Mm -hmm. We know what they want, they don't like, for example, split push. Mm -hmm. They like to do 50 men uh, with exotic, Shenji and stuff like this. When us, our playstyle is more uh, about split push. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, I don't know, like, I, I think we just prepared it the good way. We practiced like two times because we feel uh, really confident uh, with the Odin screen we made this week. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we, 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 we know this guy for sure would sell you out, for example. <laughs> like, I know the, when I ban, uh, for example, like, the sell you out on this map is only useful when you have Jaff Cav because you can poke without exposing your cav. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, that's why when they ban Falco, we ban Javkav to completely destroy their Saliot. And we know for sure, like this map uh, is legit a free Saliot with the two gates very far, you know, mm -hmm. and it can be a really mess if you have Javkav. So I think it worked a really little bit because I don't know if you see the match, but like uh, they still Saliot with Arminger and Keshig. Yeah, sure. And at the end, we just turtle the, the right tower and basically they lose one comp. Even if they don't commit their Cav at this moment, if you have full cav, you lose one infantry push, which is like terrible. <laughs> to, to, to be honest, like it's terrible. <laughs> so, so yeah. But like the, this team is really good. We know it. Even if they don't do, um, like uh, in my opinion, the Rose team don't have the result they deserve. To be honest, mm -hmm. because uh, even if they lose some player, it's still a very well experienced team. Yeah, that's interesting. And yeah, yeah. And we didn't want to face the, the Saliot. That's why we <laughs> banned Javkav. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, actually, now that you talk, started talking about Rose and we are clowns in your pool, um, let, let's just go to the standings as well on the schedule. Um, I want to start with pool B this time, actually, because I've, I've always started with pool A, and I know that we've talked a little bit uh, too, too much about pool A as well, because there was a lot of interesting matches there. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll bring up the standings for pool A. And as we can see after last week, um, it's we are clowns in first place with uh, undefeated record they've got 15 points out of five games mm -hmm. um eden you guys are in second place together with slavs on 10 points um and slavs is actually another team that i think most uh, teams have been surprised by from eu2 and um, they've been playing really well they're a polish team um and they've got three wins one loss one tie as well as you guys have and then there's rose uh, they've got seven points um so they're still on the top four right that which will mean that they can they will probably make it to um the top bracket next season which will be the feudal pool and then we will mm -hmm. also have a, a rustic pool which will be the lower pool basically um so yeah rose will still get up there but i agree they 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 could probably like be do really well in the pool a as, as well and also make it to the top four um and mm -hmm. then love and devotion is fifth sixth is sivos and seventh is banished we, we are still without a win um yeah so that is the standing and um, how do you think about Eden and Slavs? Because you both play in the last week. Slavs has to play Rose, which you, well, you've defeated already. Um, do you think they can uh, win against Rose? Honest, uh, in this um, in this setup, 
of cyber rival like you have lots of possibility like to be honest a team like uh, blemelia subject when they face each other there is no way to know how mm -hmm. they will apprehend the map and how they, they it's gonna end yeah for me like for, for sorry sorry for me like slav it's a, it's a good team but i think like rose have the, their chance too to be honest i am with rose because they are allied with me and i know this guy i like them <laughs> but like for me it could be one one yeah yeah yeah. so so you're giving them a good chance because slaps have also tied you on the week two match right yeah that was round uh, two yeah round yes, two yes. on uh, on highland fort you you tied yeah but match it, it was uh maybe of, uh, like second match and we had like it's no excuse they did well gg to them <laughs> yeah, well course. done but like i had uh, four of my guy with uh, 400 ping and one guy with six mm -hmm. fps uh, yeah that so can happen. <laughs> we basically didn't play like <laughs> yeah that can happen as well yeah but so kudos to them i mean they won the game in the end as well so they yeah, did it for them, sure course. right yeah. yeah for sure yeah, so that's still an interesting fight in Pool B for next, for next week, right? Um, Slavs mm -hmm. versus Rose. That will decide whether um, you guys will be second. Because let's say, so if Rose win against Slavs, then you guys will be second for sure. Um, and if uh, Slavs win against Rose, they will be having 13 points. And then you, if you win as well, you will also have 13 points, which will mean that Eden and Slavs will be tied, and the head-to-head -head with you guys is also tied. Yes. So then I actually have to go into the trouble of counting all your game time in the wins, uh, which will conclude uh, which of the two of you is going to uh, get the second place and fight for the third place final. It's not, uh, it's not a tie-break match? No, 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 no. No, we're not going to have a tiebreaker match, unfortunately. Um, I hope to get okay. them next season, but for this season mm -hmm. it's just going to be the, the tiebreakers that are Okay, okay. in the rules yeah so um yeah so you have to be um rooting for a uh, rose in the next week if you if you want to get second place <laughs> uh, so what do you think about we are clowns uh, they are still undefeated in your pool um you've played them as well why do you think they, they are so strong i mean we are clown uh, i know them uh, since a long time now <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's some guy from Eden, like probably the, the top player from Origin 2. Like, the, these guys are good mechanically. They are well organized. It's been like a very long time now they play with each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, for, for me, it's the best team right now. And uh, and yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, there, there is no lot of things to, to say about them, except the fact that uh, they are good and uh, we are aiming for them now. Like, mm -hmm. it's legit the objective of the Eden team, it's to to be able to um, to compete with them. Because right now it's not the case, at least it was not the case at the first round. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think we'll do it, it's just about the time. You need to get clapped before clapping people, you know? <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, you just have to make sure you keep improving, right? That's that's really important. Yeah. yeah. All right, nice. Um, okay, so let's go to Pool A then. Have you watched any of Pool A's uh, matches? Any Pool what? Uh, sorry. Uh, from Pool A, have you watched watched any of the matches uh, that they played? Like the Pool uh, Elias, Elias, Jack, Surf Slayer. I look uh, a lot of replay uh, of, uh, of course, uh, Point Guard, uh, Jake, um, uh, Surf Slayer, and uh, all these guys, of course. But like. Pff. I I don't look them directly, you know. I look them more. I, I don't care about who win. Who I just try to look like what's work on which map, yeah, and try to to get some data for the future, you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So more, yeah, like the strategy and what units they play and how they play it and the heroes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. Right, and so... I think quite an interesting thing, and there is a lot of good team, and I'm kind of impatient to to be honest to to go for the feudal. Uh, Good. yeah right for, no. for next season yeah that, i, I yes, think that's yes. going to be really good i i think uh, for everybody who's playing the league the next season is going to be really good because um the teams that are already good will play each other and teams that are starting to get better will also play each other and they can hopefully get better and mm. then maybe face a stronger teams as well but uh, we'll see so let's go over pool a um pond guard still undefeated because they haven't lost the game they have tied once my voice is going away now but uh, they have tied once but there's 16 points and they have secured the first place because they because they can only be tied by Blame my alias, but they have won against Blame Alias, so they have the tiebreaker against them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacked Ultras can still make it to second place um, because they have, um, I think, tied Blame Alias or won against them. 
And if they win um, their game, Jack Elias and uh, Jack Ultras and Blame Elias lose their game, then Jack will have 14 points, one more than Blame Elias. Uh, Surf Slayer cannot get second place anymore because they can only get 13 points and Blame Elias have, their, have the head to head to them because they won their game last uh, last week. So Surf Slayer is uh, third place maximum or fourth in their pool. Um, Chocolate Paladins can still make it in the top four, but they need to win and then Surf Slayer or Jack Ultras has to lose their game, which is very unlikely, uh, which we'll see in the matches later. And Odin's Holy Crusaders and Triarchy are all out for the fourth place um, standing. My voice is going away. All right. <laughs> <coughs> Cheers. All right. Um, when we go to the matches for uh, next week, um, we will can see that Chocolate Palance and Blame Elias play each other. Uh, that match is going to be pretty important for Blame Elias, like I mentioned, and Chocolate Balanins probably want to get a revenge as well. And they still can get into the, the top four, so that is the important match. And the other teams all play against the low bracket. So Surf Slayer versus Holy Crusaders, Jack versus Triarchy, and Pondcart versus, Odin, versus Odin's Legion. Which should be an easy game for those uh, top four teams, normally, at least. Um, yeah, so like you said, you've watched quite a few of the games. Um, what have you really liked about any of the teams that is maybe also similar to your play style or something that you look to learn from? Um, I would not say like the the team we are looking the most is uh, Weir Clan for sure, but like it's more about a specific spe specific spot and the way that they apprehend the map. Uh, because like. For, for example, when you say, when you start to strat a map with that type of ban, you need to to take in consideration like a lot of uh, factor, mm -hmm. and like what is really interesting, it's to see like you think the same at this spot, but you didn't use it because you thought like the danger was not ac acceptable, you know. Mm -hmm. But them, they did and they did great. So you know, maybe you are wrong on this part and stuff like this. It's more to me. I look the much more to 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 try to compare uh, what I had in my head and try to think uh, differently because mm -hmm. like. For example, on uh, on uh, on Kurak uh, playing against uh, Odin's Legion, like we had kind of the same tactics that we are clan at the start, but mm -hmm. we totally changed after few scrims. I see. And like at the end of the day, all the replay and stuff like this after the match, after all the strat you made during the week and stuff, it's really good to have um, um, uh, uh, feedback about your way of thinking, you know, like mm -hmm. or to way to apprehend the map. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, you, you said you changed your strategy against Owners Legion. What made you change it then? Um, it was not effective enough at our taste. Hmm. That, that, that's what you assumed at, uh, at, at that time, at least. Yeah. All right, cool. So, so yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. And then, um, so like you said, Core Castle seemed to have a very clear strategy, right? With defending the base camp, basically, for most teams, that is what worked in the end. Um, mm -hmm. I want to give uh, kudos to Slavs, though, for uh, in a game against Banich. Um, of course, Banich is not the best team in the league currently, so uh, Slavs probably could take a little bit, little bit of risk. But they destroyed uh, a Siege Tower uh, on the left, or from the attack's perspective, it's the right Siege Tower. Um, and that allowed them to defend B and, B, B and, and A. Uh, is that something that you even considered using a strategy? Because it, it, it did seem really interesting and it, and it worked as well for them. The problem with Falco is kind of a bait, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the Falco meta is good, but the problem is, like, it's all about exotic unit now, the, the, the meta. You don't have any more uh, the, good, uh, the good old Pike uh, meta that we have mm -hmm. before, you know? So now it's all around exotic. The problem is, like, if you play Falco, you almost uh, gamble 50-50 uh, your fight. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if you have a good shot at the stars and, and and you get their exotic you need they will lose like a lot of dps and actually you can tempo more so most of the time the people who play falco it's because they are really confident with them mm -hmm. or it's because they want to 50 50 like for example if i want to play against a, a team i consider better mm -hmm. i would consider uh, playing a lot around falco mm, that's interesting actually to be honest yeah <clears throat> so nice. yeah yeah cool Corto, uh, anything you want to ask about this? Because I, I would like to go deeper into this uh, idea. Non, enfin, je rajouterais 
Dans la rigueur, pour continuer sur les Falcos, est-ce est que tu as un peu des, des spécificités Par exemple, si sur telle map, tu, tu te dis absolument il faut jouer les Falcos Ou, euh, ou ça, vraiment, ça, ça, ça dépend vraiment des situations quoi. Mais Je pense que tu as déjà répondu. Donc, euh... mm -hmm. Pour les Falcos, c'est une certaine map. Like it... I mean, I would not say uh, like. I don't know how to say this. Mais en gros, tu te tires un peu une balle dans le pied des fois à prendre les Falcos. Tu vois, sur une team ouais. que tu que es à l'aise sur un push euh, normal, vaut mieux que tu le prennes pas en fait et que tu joues autour des, des unités exotiques où tu peux commit, tu vois, par exemple, si tu sens que mécaniquement, tu as quand même le dessus sur la team, euh, prendre les Falcos, c'est un peu de tirer une balle dans le pied, quoi. Ouais, faut pas oublier que ça coûte pas mal d'influence et que en plus, ouais. une unité comme ça, c'est un engagement, quoi. Mais puis, tu vois, comparé à un Coco, un Coco, il jette, il, il court, tu vois. Et un Falco, le problème, c'est que tu es obligé de shooter en constant pour garder ton DPS, tu as une Polax qui saute dedans, tu plus de Falco, quoi. Ouais. C'est très statique. Ouais, 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 c'est très statique. C'est pour ça que ça peut apparaître sur certaines maps. T'as certaines maps où il y a des points qui, on sait que ça peut mmh. s'y prêter. Mmh. Mais ouais. comme tout le monde sait qu'ils sont là, il se dire aussi qu'ils sont faciles à compter. Yeah. Exactement. Right, so sorry, in... sorry. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So uh, this is really good for my French. So in, in my best understanding of your French, which is obviously way better than mine. Um, so what you're saying is that uh, Falcos are, are like you said in my conversation as well with you. Uh, they are a gamble, and you need to protect them really well. Um, and Corto said that is so. Is there any specific map that they might be better in, right? And uh, you said so. It's really hard to defend the Falco because one Polex can fuck you up because they can use the Gnosis here ultimate, of course, and then all the Falcos will be gone. So there might be specific maps. I think that's what you talked about where Falcos could be better because it's easier to defend them. Am I right? Uh, yes, kind of. Like you, you have some spot uh, really good to, to to shoot with Falco without being too much in danger. Like or, or where the danger is acceptable. Mm -hmm. But like the problem with Falco is like to do the DPS with Falco, they need to shoot. It's turbo dumb to say this, but actually, yeah, it's, that's true. Though, like, yeah. <laughs> if you compare this DPS to Shenji mm -hmm. or uh, Coco, Shenji you throw one time, their DPS is here. You know, like and same for Coco, you throw one time and you run. Yeah, you exactly. don't have to look after them. Yeah. But like Falco, you need to constant shooting. Mm -hmm. And like it's really good me. I really like this exotic unit, but I would consider much more playing them against uh, a team I consider better than me, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, so th this is something that uh, you're the first to, to, to talk about the units like this, and I think it's really interesting. So you're saying that, okay, so the Falcos are units that allow you to 50-50 against maybe even a better team, right? So that's yes. th this could be something that uh, teams at the bottom of the league uh, should maybe try, right? To play the Falcos, mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. So then what would you play against teams that are on the lower standings that, and that you feel confident you can win against? What are units that you like to play? Bah, if you look, uh, I ban Falco every game. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because you don't want the 50-50 yet. Yeah, so you, you feel really confident with <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost sure. every game, right? Yeah, okay. yeah for sure. <laughs> so, uh, and you already mentioned, so the Shangis, are, are those one of the units that you think are like a high skill and allow you to outplay your opponent? There, there, there is another problem too with Falco. It's mm. like CBL map, you always play Falco. Mm. You know, so the team like uh, we're clown and all these dudes that are, are used to play Falco in that type of uh, setup. Yeah. So it's uh, things to take in consideration too. Shenji, it's kind of, it's good sometimes, but it could be a bait in some map mm -hmm. uh, because it's a lot of influence. It's uh, something that uh, you use every 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. So you need to have the good tempo, right moment, right spot, uh, right uh, setup. Yeah. Like, it's not that easy to set up for them, yeah. even if it looks easy to play. Mm -hmm. like, it, re it requires a lot of timing, right, to use the Shenji well, yeah. because you only have yeah. one, one throw, essentially, maybe mm -hmm. two in a fight, but you need to time it very well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then what about the Flamer, another specialist unit that we see is being played a lot? Where... For me, to be honest, uh, Flamer, Shenji, all of this should be out of this game. Like, <laughs> really? It's a mess. It's oh, a fucking mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, why? It's... <laughs> Me, me, you know, I, I'm like, um, uh, it's, uh, I'm the, the, the little child of a keyboard warrior, you know, this guy, Niva Bird, Varak, all these dudes. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, it's the old meta with only Pike, Palace Guard, that type <laughs> of stuff, you know, <laughs> like full infantry push. You want, if, yeah, 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 you want season two style uh, combat uh, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like exotic unit is interesting, but... It's a different playstyle. Mm. It's uh, it's uh, I don't know me. It's not uh, my my favorite to be honest. Yeah, But I like guess. you need to play around the, the meta actually. Like if you, I can't swim against the meta playing yeah. only melee against people that can wipe a push with only one exotic. Yeah, if yeah, there yeah. is no point. If, 
<laughs> if you only play Imperial Pike against uh, Outriders, you're going to get uh, yourself killed for sure. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, so that's okay. That's really interesting. Um, thank you for for talking to us about that. Um, I really like it. And so then uh, we talked with Pine about the, the new units from this season, um, especially the Alchemists. They seem to be uh, getting picked up more. I think their healing seems to be really, really strong. The Banner Guards, um, not that good, maybe. Although their reset charge might be really good in some situations with certain teams. Um, do you think the the Alchemists do do anything for you in your strategy that you have in mind? Um, we test them, of course. Mm -hmm. But like it's something that will come in the comp, but we can't play around this, mm -hmm. you know. Like, it, I, I don't know to 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 like the the leadership of this unit is like what one hundred twenty. Yeah, one hundred twenty. It's, it's so really low. it's like it's like a pike militia. Mm -hmm. So yes. like that means if you want to bring a setup like this, that means there is a dude with two T five uh, one alchemist. Yeah. It's the only way to bring them in uh, effective comp. Mm -hmm. So that will be played. If you look at the amount of people who play 2T5 right now, it will be like very few amount of people. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be good in defense, you know, to heal your setup instead of going to, to, to supply. But uh, during a push, uh, the test we made, maybe we did it wrong, but like during a push, you can be clapped uh, too fast. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one grenade, uh, one... Uh, one coco, whatever. Like mm -hmm. there is too 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 much opportunity to clap them, uh, and if you start to lose like uh, three or four of them, your heal it's kind of I will not say useless because it's still good, but uh, you 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 lose some heal. So yeah, definitely. Like it, it's a, it, it's it's only eight uh, models, right? So if you lose three or four, okay. that's that's half of your healing. Yeah. Gone. So that that's a lot. Yeah, true. All right, interesting. Yeah. So we've seen a few being played in the league, not not too many, but yeah, in some situations they're really good. I think. Especially on field maps, which you don't play in the league, at least not until now. I think they might mm -hmm. be good on some field maps because the supply point is so far away that having some healing in the middle of the field could be really, really good to keep the momentum yeah, but do, do you imagine running with them with Jaff cover on you? Yeah, that's the thing, right? So <laughs> I know. So okay. So yeah. So let's let's just say that in one ranked match that I played, um, we did yeah. uh, Modal Alchemist. So just two units, right, on on the C mm -hmm. point on a field map, and uh, there was. Three Jeff Kev and probably two, I don't know, whatever, like who's yeah. our Kashyyyks, I don't know. Um, and um, the the healers like kept healing the model because they were just hiding behind mm -hmm. like a, some small building. Um, and they didn't get killed because they healed up so quickly that they didn't get one shot at somehow and then they just get kept healing. So we could 2v5 for a really long yeah. time. But yeah, you need to be a little lucky and maybe to, your opponent to be honest, too good. To, yeah, to, it, it's to be honest, uh, CB. Yeah. To be honest, CB, bro, we can't take Ranked uh, as a uh, consideration. <laughs> yes, I because, know. like, this mod is Turbo Trash. Mm -hmm. You have, like, Turbo Trash people playing it. You are boosted people playing uh, it. And actually, even the top 25, it's not the top 25 best player of the server. Like, if you yeah, look, there is some, true. some I would not say clowns, but clowns in it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, so for, no, for, for me, you, you should practice it, maybe uh, do, doing some scream or 15-15, uh, yeah, because, like, for me, ranked sometimes you have people you, you don't even know if they use their proper end, you know, to play like it's it's full random. Yeah, yeah, totally, you're totally right. Like ranked is a bit more serious than your normal seats, right? That's at least but true. I, I I don't know what they put the 24 hours because like mm -hmm. right now, legit, if you want to play top 25 or actually good game, you need to snipe Payan at uh, 3 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, it's true. the only way to have a good queue. Yeah. And like in the past, at least when you played ranked and you had the good elo, mm -hmm. like because of the timer, you only face people with good elo. It was much much better. I I don't know why they did this actually, mm. but <laughs> for me it's just a waste. And actually, you have lots of people who stop playing ranked after, uh, like who stop really committing about ranked. You know, playing top twenty five, tryharding them. Yeah, true, true. Especially once uh, people uh, have uh, fifty hundred points, right? They get most of the yeah. rewards and then they stop playing. Yeah, I think you noticed that especially in the last week, last last season, um, where I think all the top hundred players stopped playing or something, and then um, those who played could only lose points. Almost it felt like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, ranked needs to be to get a little update somehow to make it. Mm -hmm. like better, I think, because it, it was efficient it, in the time. Yeah. Like seven, seven or uh, season six was turbo good, mm -hmm. but here I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I think right can can still be really nice and good because it's limited RT and um, yeah, it's it's a bit yeah, more serious, sure. right? It, it's more about winning games instead of getting challenges done. And yeah. mm -hmm. but still, the scrimming is way better. I'm so happy we have the custom lobby now. Yeah, it's it's better, better, way better. 
All right, nice. Uh, Corto, anything else you wanted to, to, to touch on in this podcast? No, but, uh, I try to talk in English. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, easy. Anyway, <laughs> the same in all the game, the, the competitive game is not the same like uh, in normal game and uh, in, the rank, in, the, in, uh, in the rank, in the ranking. Um, so they, they, they need to improve the, the matchmaking of player mm -hmm. and uh, maybe to make the, um, uh, a memory of uh, your uh, your ranked of the previous season mm -hmm. to, to 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 have a boost at the beginning and uh, go go up quickly and yeah. uh, the, the good player uh, can uh, play uh, uh, entre eux. Comment dire entre eux? The, 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 uh, between each other. But like the, yeah, the exactly. problem, Corto, I understand what you mean, but like the only way to fix the matchmaking right now is to set a time like they did before. Because like the mm -hmm. problem is like, let's say for example, they put uh, high, like they, they put a high, uh, high elo matchmaking. You will wait like uh, 20 minutes to find a, to find a, a ranked at the end. Like, and it's not, you, you can't do this. Me, for me, the only way to fix this is to set a time like they did before, maybe adapt mm -hmm. or put more hours. For, 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 for the people, you know, but do something between uh, this setup, like 24 hours, and uh, the short amount of time that we had uh, the, the previous season, you know. Mm. Yeah, something in the middle. C'est le problème que tu as un peu dans tous les jeux, c'est que euh, soit tu choisis d'avoir un matchmaking qui trouve des matchs rapidement, mais tu perds du coup en qualité. Oui, bien sûr. Game, bien sûr, bien sûr. Tu attends la qualité, dans ces cas-là, il faut attendre très longtemps. Et c'est déjà compliqué à faire dans un jeu en 5v5, ce qui est l'expérience ouais. qu'on a le plus répandu. Donc mm -hmm. en, en jeu à 15v15, c'est ah, une, vrai. une vraie misère. C'est pour ça qu'il ne faut pas compter sur les ranquettes pour avoir du jeu correct. Le, ah non, non, le, le gameplay est un petit peu plus évolué qu'en siège parce que bah, c'est un peu plus cadré, que tu as des joueurs un peu plus expérimentés normalement à cause du, du niveau des ranquettes. Mais le, le vrai jeu intéressant, comme on disait au début, c'est dans les tournois et dans ce type de compétition où on peut faire vraiment du 15v15. Oui, clairement. C'est complètement différent. Totally on attend des ranquettes d'un jeu, un jeu équivalent au tournoi. Quoi. Non, 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 c'est clair. Donc, je pense que j'ai dit le plus de ça. Mais pouvez-vous me donner une courte summary <laughs> Um, he just said like um, taking the ranked as um, as uh, as something competitive is irrelevant right now, mm -hmm. and like it's already really tough to do a correct matchmaking in five v five, for example, like uh, League of Legends and stuff like mm -hmm. this. So fifteen versus fifteen, it's really tough. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like the the only way to compete, and we both agree on this with Corto, it's like uh, to play a tournament right now. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. <laughs> yeah, I think so as well. I mean, and also if you consider that ranked. Um... Is you you can only play with three three players at a time, which is still yeah. a bit random in a in a big team game with fifteen players. Like, um, it is a really big team game. I mean, fifteen to fifteen is so different if you play together with everybody compared to five ran random teams of three players. Yeah, um, for sure. It's, it's it's so different. And yeah, is there is there any um, ranked system that you think from like from another game that that is good that could be implemented into uh, Conquest Blade? For me, the, the old setup, the old yeah. setup, uh, season seven uh, with timer, mm. it was much better. Yeah, yeah. I had always queue with the, the guys like Slide, MX New, and and actually the the, the game was turbo intense. It was like mm. totally different. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I I, I kind of like that they opened it up the times because it allowed for so many more players to play ranked like over the whole weekend. Um, but yeah, I I get it as well that it's it's like if but, you if, if it's more compacted together than. It does provide intenser gameplay for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, that's true. Uh, be because right now, legit, like le the top twenty-five don't mean anything anymore. Like yeah, in, in season like, seven, like it was really the morning. best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like <laughs> right now, it's the guy who queue the most in the better queue. Like uh, so, yeah. legit, it's the guy who snipe uh, more payan than than the yeah, other. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of true. Like I know if I play in the morning, I'll get more wins compared to you know, somewhere later in the day. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right, that, that's enough about rank, though. Uh, let's go back to the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so now that we're kind of close to ending the season, I mean, we will talk way more about next season uh, in next, next week's podcast, of course. Um, um, but um, I've also asked Pai in this last week, um, but so I'm also going to ask you, um, where do you see this league going? Uh, and what do you hope that uh, this league will go into you know, over the next couple of seasons, maybe? Me, to be honest, um, I really like uh, the setup of uh, Cyber Rival, like uh, the, the, the rules uh, that um, Niba Bird and the old guy did, uh, plus uh, your income after was, uh, is for me the best, uh, the, the, the best way to play tournament. 
it's something that people complain a lot since uh, about CBL, you know, like the three dead, the three um, deaths. Mm -hmm. So you have to play turbo, pa fin, not passive, but like you, you, you have to, to don't play too much aggressive. Mm -hmm. The spam RT, the meta tower, like all of this, you don't have it in CB rival. So you have like more attack winning, you have uh, more intense fight or at least more aggressive. Uh, the the people in, in general commit much much more their heroes. So like even like during during the push or stuff like this, you have more possibility, more uh, pff, more opportunities. It's really really good. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> for me, uh, I will play of course CBL if there is a CBL. But yeah, to be see. honest, I I enjoy much more uh, CB rival. And I know from feedback from the other guy and and from the other team at the start. Uh, they didn't um, expect uh, this tournament to work, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But right now, they're all like, uh, ah, it's the only content uh, <laughs> relevant right now. It's really good. Like So so me, I think it will... Uh, well, of course, if you continue, guys, and there is still someone to to organize all of this, you, you people, uh, I think, team will continue to to come and commit in this tournament. And uh, I think even like more new team will come, like mm -hmm. because we, we talked about Banished earlier. They maybe don't do a good result in this tournament, but like at least they have some content every week yeah, while true. everyone's yeah. watching behind Twitch. <laughs> yes. And like at the end of the day, they will have like one good group, I think, because like even if it's gonna be the rustic group, I think like you will have some match really interesting to watch anyway. Yeah, true. And to play, like I I think maybe next season or the season after you will have three or four groups. Huh? Yeah, yeah, my story will be like there's already three or four teams that want to get into the league, and I think mm -hmm. there's even more that also want to join but haven't officially uh, registered yet. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid uh, we might get. Uh, I'm not afraid, but I, I think we might get more teams than I can handle, maybe. So, but I'm sure we will manage something because it's it's just too fun to let this drop. And but yeah. yes, the 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 more team you have, the more interesting the this competition will be. It's... Yeah, totally. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely right. Like, um, I just hope that we can get even more teams and players like playing, watching, enjoying the game. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, like you said, I think tournaments are really, really good in this game. Just because yes. it's it's so much about the team that you play in, and I think that's also what makes this this game so much fun. When you even when you play Territorial War, it's so much fun because you have a big community, right, mm -hmm. with the house and the, the alliance maybe even, and you play with so many friends, you create so many friends. So that's that's really cool. Yeah. But to be honest, uh, me, my TW experience is not the same. Right? Oh, okay, yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, yeah. Like, uh, I'm not saying necessarily that TW is really great. I mean, it's it has so many flaws. Um, oh, no, yeah. now it's good. Yeah. It's the first season we face uh, a team uh, came from EU2, mm -hmm. uh, get reinforced by uh, some Cersei Lerga, four Captivator, GG ah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This guy defend really well the last point, nice. GG to them, and they don't intercept. Mm -hmm. They don't slot block. It's nice. legit like the 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 best open, the best opponent we had since two seasons. Nice, the... nice, nice. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I mean, just transfer to EU, EU too. Like it's fair games on there most of the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I cannot say anything else. Yeah, no, just kidding. But uh, I, I saw that video about your games with Eden versus for, Forget to Take the Vader. Was yeah, it was a nice game mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, good to watch it as well. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you see the four captivator. Part. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of editing there, so. Uh, don't worry, I don't worry. We almost capped. We almost capped four times the last point, and the, the day we <laughs> cap this last point, I'm telling you, there, there is gonna be a video too. Don't worry, guys. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I, I, I look forward to it already. Yeah. All right. So, um, because I said I wanted to talk uh, to you about the French community, we're going to do it uh, as the last talking subject. Um, okay, so, okay. Um, you said that you are not a French community, which is of course true, but you are French just as well as Corto. Um, and I know there is a pretty big, big French community on EU2 and also on EU1. Uh, so just tell me what you know about the French in Conqueror's Blade. Uh, the, the French in Conqueror's Blade actually is the same mess uh, than the French in uh, every MMO game. Like, uh, we always find some way to don't play with each other instead of uh, regroup ourselves. Because like, if you look... Uh, the competitive player, you have lots of French guys actually who play in the in a in very competitive team in a very good way. Even in the past, you had like lots of lots of French actually who build a like great team and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's the ego or if it's cultural or whatever. But uh, we always find a way to don't play with each other. 
So we have some French communities like uh, Argonaut, who's like uh, by legit doing a great job. Uh, if you look at the amount of time they are with each other, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a miracle to be honest. But like the the the, the problem is um, they have some 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 good player uh, today in Argonaut, but they don't have the amount of uh, quality player to require you know to 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 be um, how do you say this to really take the control in a server, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, yeah. And it was the same for GT. We had like a very good lineup, but at the end of the day, because we didn't join uh, or effort with Argonaut or stuff like this, <laughs> it's always the same mess. To be honest with the French community, like yes. always, always the same mess, <laughs> same drama, same same stuff. Like <laughs> I don't know, but uh, you have lots of French. It's true. Uh, most of them are really good. We clap the Dutch people every day. Uh, this is so a little sad, message man. for Brent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no no, I don't know what to say. Expect that uh, expect that uh, we don't know how to regroup each other. That's it. I mean, mm -hmm. even on U two, huh? <laughs> you have lots of players who want to stay in U two instead yeah. of regrouping in U one and have some good fight here. Uh, yeah, I don't... true true. <clears throat> or you should just go to U two. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. No 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 <laughs> way no way. Well, that's the problem, man. They're right there. Yeah. No, just kidding. All right. Yeah, it's fun. Like, uh, uh, I actually think it's not typical French that you know guys don't want to play together with just French. I think um, the Dutch do it as well. Uh, I'm Dutch, and I'm also part of, I guess, the Dutch community if there is one. But <laughs> all the Dutch players want to play with international players. So that's there's always like five Dutch players together in a house or a team, yeah. and then maybe like we had a Dutch house on uh, EU2 TDD the Dutch division. Uh, it still exists, but it's it's small now. Um, mm -hmm. And we had like maybe 25, 30, 35 at one point, like all Dutch players. But that's good for like taking one city and defending it. But uh, yeah, yeah. whenever uh, we got more players, then they would go to another international house because they got more control and they're better, right? And yeah, yeah. we lose some. Yeah, it's, it's just what happens. Uh, maybe maybe Corto can talk more about the French community. Yeah, or... I'm curious, Corto. <laughs> what do you think? <rire> ouais, j'avais le sourire en mode plus 3 minutes je rigole non mais ouais c'est comme tu dis on n'arrive pas à jouer tous ensemble à chaque fois il y a peut-être des histoires d'ego ou d'individualité ou quoi que ce soit mais il y a toujours des dramas parce que les limites je pense qu'en fait quand un français est dans une team internationale l'avantage c'est qu'il communique un peu moins ou on communique en anglais qui est une un peu qui est pas notre langue maternelle et du coup bah, les dramas partent beaucoup moins quoi on fait moins attention aux moins de petits mots aux moins de petits trucs ouais, ouais. Et, euh, et du coup, voilà, mais c'est, je pense, bon, c'est un peu une forme d'individualité qui est en ce moment, et voilà, il faut espérer que ça passe. Mais, euh... <rire> mais ouais, c'est vrai qu'on a un peu la même réputation sur tous les jeux, et bon, c'est, voilà, c'est comme ça. Oui, <rire> oui c'est comme ça. <rire> yeah, so, um, I, I will translate what I can. So, I think, Corto, you said that um, the French, they like to play internationally, but they also have trouble with speaking French, uh, like speaking English sometimes. Or they like to do it because they have trouble speaking English? Uh, they, 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 he legit said that we talk less because we talk English and we oh. have, uh, like, <laughs> it's not our first language, so we have uh, less way to, how do you say this, to create drama. Mm, to express yourself, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> so if, if you speak French, you speak so much that it always creates drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, fair game, fair game. <laughs> all right, then. Um, I hope this episode that we did today uh, is going to create enough drama on the uh, on the Congress Blade communities, um, especially the French ones, because we've talked a lot um, and I've appreciated everything you said. Um, I thought it was especially interesting talking to you about the, the meta with the Falconetti, the Shenji, the Flamers, even if you don't like them. Um, I think we need to 50-50 the Falconetti next game. That's it. We are the bottom <laughs> team, so we're just going to have to 50-50 the Falconetti. Um, I'll blame you if it, if it doesn't work. Yeah, um, okay, no so problem. I'll come back to you later. <laughs> All right. Um, Corto, any closing words from you? And then I'll go to Vasectomy for, for his closing words. Non, c'était bah ouais, sympa, ça a bien parlé un peu des... C'était intéressant d'avoir la vision d'un raid leader et du coup d'avoir une vision vraiment stratégique un peu des games, des unités, des maps, tout ça. Mm -hmm. Donc euh, c'était vraiment intéressant, je trouve, vis-à-vis -vis du jeu. Merci à toi d'être venu, quoi. Yeah. Ouais, pas de soucis. Mais pour le coup, on peut le faire parce que en fonction des bans, tu changes totalement de strat, donc tu peux parler ouvertement de, de certaines choses, tu vois. Ah bah ouais, complètement. Mais ce, moi, je suis le premier à penser que le ban des unités rapporte un, un, un côté stratégique énorme dans la game. Ah ouais, enfin, clairement. Et ouais, c'est euh... même game breaker. Et si t'arrives à anticiper le ban, t'as pratiquement, c'est déjà, c'est déjà très fort. 
C'est très fort, ça peut déstabiliser une équipe ou ça peut changer complètement une, une map, la manière dont tu dont, dont approches une, une map. Donc c'est mm -hmm. essentiel pour moi dans le jeu. Ouais. There we go. Et merci à toi. <laughs> There we go. That's for the French. It's secret. Uh, if you want to translate it later, then you can <laughs> Google Translate, I guess. No, just kidding. Uh, for Zach, any closing words then for the for the English uh, listeners as well? Uh, bah, thank you guys for the for the the organization of the tournament. Uh, for the people who watch actually your match because it's uh, quite a uh, I would not say like it gives some hype. <laughs> And, and it's really good for us. Uh, no, yeah, basically, thank you. Thanks for the podcast. Uh, I'm not used to do that type of uh, things, but uh, but why not? And uh, and I'm kind of impatient to see uh, the other one uh, talking about the meta and what they think about the, the tournament. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Same for me. Uh, I mean, this is only the third time that Corto and I have been doing this podcast. So um, mm -hmm. we, we are with you on not having any idea about how to do all this. <laughs> uh, but we're getting better at it, I hope. Um, all right. Then um, to close this out, um, is there anything you would like to see on the podcast? Uh, Anyone in mind? Uh, what? Do you have anyone in, that you would like to see on the, on the podcast as a guest? Ah, um, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I would check. Um, to, 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 to. I think yeah, must flame for sure. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, we are clowns, <laughs> uh, team captain. All right, we'll see if we can get them in. Um, I mean, they play pawn card in the finals, so we've already uh, seen um, Pyan, so I guess we have to uh, get mass flame. Uh, take care, mass flame, yeah. Mr. Slayer. He's yeah, not exactly. uh, we are clowns. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, uh, hang on there. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, so, so, I'm so sorry. I'll go get flamed really hard for this. All right, mass flame for yeah, Mr. Slayer. Um, he's one of the best team captains probably out there. Um, I'm so sorry. All right, but yeah, true. Um, he's really good. I love his team as well. Um, it's confusing with all the names. I'm sorry. I've, I've seen so many yeah, fine, players and teams get them. I need to cook for my wife. My yeah, exactly. All right. Um, see you later. Thanks, man. And I'll see you. Aside. Thanks. Yeah. See you later. See you. Bye. -bye. All right. Um, so for everybody else. Um, you can watch and stream this podcast and whatever not on Spotify and on YouTube. Um, we will be back next week with another episode um, and we'll see who is our guest then. I hope to get some of the casters in and maybe even Mask Flames if he wants to join. Um, so we'll see about all those things. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the chat like YouTube, Discord, whatever else. Um, and I'll see if I can answer them in the next week. I imagine you guys have some questions about the league for next season or maybe the finals or anything else that's related to the tournament. or doesn't matter, even about me uh, or Corto. Just ask us any questions and we will answer those as the best as we can. All right, that's it, Corto. Thank you once again. Um, thank you. You are black and white now because uh, Vasectomy left, but that's fine. Um, so thank you again. See you later all and have fun. Uh -huh.